So we are going to do some selected questions. Eh? Uh, I believe you have your passport pass. And I want to start with the paper of uh, September 2015. September 2015. Oh, September 2015. Question number 2B. Question 2B. Question 2B. September 2015, question 2B. Abigail, I hope you have your pass with us. Is that so? I unmute you too. Abigail, you have your pass papers? Okay. So question 2B reads, the following details were extracted from the records of ABC Limited for the month of July 2015. We have direct materials, direct labor, production overhead, which are variable, fixed, Selling and distribution overhead, which are variable, semi variable, uh, fixed, administration overhead, which are fixed, semi variable, uh, sales, production sales units were 10,000 units. You are required to get income statement at a marginal costing, break even point in units and uh, revenue, and you calculate the margin of safety. Calculate the margin. Uh, safety. So, as you know, when you are told to do the marginal costing issues, I have always told you you should begin by identifying the unit costs. The unit costs. You begin by identifying the unit cost, and the unit cost, there are two of them. We start with marginal. Our marginal captures the variable production cost only. The variable production cost only. So the variable production cost only are the direct materials, which is 30,000, plus the direct labor, which is 22,000 plus the variable production overheads, which are 4,000. Those are the variable production. And then these ones, you divide by the number of units. You divide by the number of units produced, the number of units produced and sold, they were 10,000. So you divide this by 10, When you divide that by 10, what do you get? Five thousand six hundred. Five thousand six hundred. 
get 5,600. Higher. Then we get the FOER, the fixed overhead absorption rate. And this one is the 6,000. You divide by 10. You divide by 10, and that will be shillings 600. So, if you are dealing with absorption, if you are dealing with absorption, it will be 5,600 plus 600. That is the shilling 6,200. Shilling 6,200. Then you can also have a uh, Variable and production costs. Of those ones, you can put them in the statement. You can put them in the statement. So what we are already given here is uh, according to uh, the absorption costing. Absorption costing. So we are told to deal with marginal costing. We are told to deal with marginal costing. So in the marginal costing. We'll have something like this. Marginal costing income statements. Marginal costing income statements. So this one, we will have sales. So sales just mean and they are provided down there. You can see the, the figures are in thousands. So it is a hundred thousand. The figures are in thousands, so it's a hundred thousand. Then you less the opening stock. The opening stock. Now, this question does not have stocks because your total production in sales were just 10,000. So, Akuna opening, Akuna closing. So, it will be zero times 5,600. That is zero. Then, production. Production. Uh, production is uh, we have produced 10,000, so it is 10 multiplied by 5,600, so this will be 56,000. Our closing stock, closing stock is zero times 5,600, that is zero. So that means something called cost of sales. Something called cost of sales will just be 56,000. Will just be 56,000. And when you have that, uh, you get something we call gross contribution gross contribution that would be 44,000 44,000 then you proceed and say less variable non production costs variable non production costs variable non production costs so the variable and production cost that we are supposed to less, uh, you got where we have uh, the selling. We have selling 
overheads, selling and distribution, selling and distribution. So selling and distribution, we have the variable components, the variable, which is 2,500, 2,500. Then there is semi-variable, the semi-variable, now, this semi variable, we are told it is 50% fixed. So it will be 50% of 4,000. So that gives us what? 2,000. We are going to get a variable element in administration. Administration. Administration, he called a semi variable. Semi variable. So the semi variable, it is 75% of 10,000. So that is 7,500. That is 7,500. So when you left these ones, I've been telling you, you get a figure we call net contribution. Net contribution. Uh -huh. So same as 44,000 minus 2,500 minus 2,000 minus 7,500 is that 2,000. That's 2,000. Then you say less fixed costs. Less fixed costs. So the fixed costs that we have are production overhead for the production overhead. That one is already given state, it is 6,000. Eh? It is 6,000. Uh, selling. And distribution. Selling and distribution. Uh, first of all, we bring the semi-variable. The semi-variable. So the semi-variable will be 50% of the 4,000. So that is 2,000. 2,000. Then we have the fixed, which is uh, 1,000. Then we bring the administration. The administration. Administration, we have the fixed. We have the fixed, which is uh, 10,000. Which is 10,000.
Jesus. So that is the fixed, then the semi variable, semi variable is 25 percent of the 10,000, that is 2,500. So, with that, now we have the net profit. That we have the net profit. So, how much? Abigail, I need to see your answer. What is the net profit? Is it ten thousand? Ten thousand five hundred. Ten thousand five hundred. So that is the end of the statement. So break even point in units and in revenue. So we are told to get the breaking even point in units. So Kurizwa break even. Point in units, my given point in units. The formula is XBB is equals to F. You divide by contribution margin. You divide by contribution margin. So F is where you have the fixed cost, eh? zero. 6,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,000 plus 10,000, 19,000, 19,000. Uh, contribution margin, contribution per unit, it will be this net contribution that 2,000 you divide by 10 units. That is 3,200. So XBE, it will be 19 million. Now we have to bring the full figure. This one, remember these figures are in thousands, eh? Yeah, so you divide it by 3,200. Fifty nine point five. So this one you can round it to fifty nine thirty eight units. You can round it that way. Then break even points, break even points in shillings or in value, break even points in shillings or in value, uh, RBE 
is F defined by contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin ratio. So contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin we divide by the price. The contribution margin ratio is contribution divided by the price. So this one, eh, you can work with either per unit or total. So you guys want to break it per unit. So uh, the contribution total in the Tukonai is at 2,000. The price of the Q revenue is 100,000. So this becomes 0 0.32. That becomes 0 0.32. So our break even point, RBE, will then be 19 million. You divide by 0 0.32. You divide by. 59, 57, 59, 57, 57, 57, 57, 57, 57, so margin of safety in units MOS is X minus XPE. So this will be ten thousand minus fifty nine thirty eight. Forty sixty two units. Then margin of safety in shillings. Margin of safety in shillings. Uh, MOS is R minus RBE, so this is a hundred thousand minus fifty nine three seventy five thousand. Oh, sorry, sorry. I should have put this in terms of videos. Eh? So, so draw these zeros. I'm at the on the Zehapa. I'm at the So that's going forward. One hundred million minus fifty nine. Forty. Forty million. Six twenty five thousand. Forty million six twenty five thousand. Okay. Are we together? The units. These are the units produced. The units produced. X represents the unit produced. That's what we have the guy. 
she's not talking. You know, she's still in class. Okay, so that is the first question that I wanted us to look at. See, Tukosawa. Okay. Mwalimu? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. About the BEP. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I thought uh, BEP is P over CM, whereby CM is P minus V. But here we are using fixed cost instead of price. I don't know why. You are thinking was wrong. My thinking. <laughs> okay. Yes. Very even point. Yes, sir. It's always fixed cost divided by contribution margin. So maybe okay. maybe the typing error instead of writing F, the load P. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh if you look at, if you are reading a formula somewhere, if you look at the substitution, have they done the substitution down there? Okay, I, I'm not looking at it from the book now. It's something I read before. Oh, then uh, yeah. the correct way is what you have written. F, you divide by oh. contribution margin. Eh? Okay, so. so. Oh. Thank you. you. No, the problem is I could hear you ask, and then when I try to respond, you're not hearing me, but Nika Nini, Nika tap to speak. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, then that's good. Right. So okay. We, we, we are okay now with that question, then. So the next one is question four, still on the same paper. Still on the same paper. It is question number four. Question four A is on cash budget. Question number four A is on cash budget. So we are told Autotech Enterprises Limited have given the following particulars for cash budgeting. We have uh, Man, sales, materials, wages, and overheads. Then we are told 10% of sales are cash. Of the credit, 50% are collected the following month and balance uh, the subsequent month. Creditors for material purchases give two months credit. Overheads are paid one month in arrears. Dividend of shillings 1.5 million will be paid in December. Machinery costing 10 million will be installed in September. Payment will be in monthly installments of 200 or 2, 2 million per month for the five months from October. Proceeds from sale of old machinery will be received in October. Income tax, that is advanced tax of 5 million, will be paid in October. Opening cash balance on 1st of October was that. If cash falls below 500,000, a short term loan can be arranged at an interest rate of 18% per annum. Interest is payable monthly after the month of borrowing. So, required cash budget for the three months ending that 1st of December. So, it matters cash budgets. I told you the first thing that you do is to come up here with a column we call details. And in this column of details, 
The first thing you bring is the receipts where we are getting money from receipts. And having read the question, we have been able to see, according to information one, we will get money from sales. And these sales are of two categories. We have cash, which we are told is 10%. We are told is 10 percent. Then we have credits, and these credits, So credit, I was saying, it is uh, 90% that remains, it's 90%. But now of this 90%, we are told 50% will be collected. So 50% of the credit sales, 50% are collected. So it is 50% of this. And the balance, which is also 50%. <laughs> because these two fifties, they are for this. They are not for the total sales. They are not for the total sales. You know what I'm saying? Of the credit sales. Of the credit sales. Yeah, so the 50% leads only to the credit. Yeah, that's the first catch. So most students would have used 50 here and then 40 here, which would be wrong. Yeah. Right. The next one that is bringing money in after the sales is there is the old machinery. Yeah? Old machinery, so we just call it old machinery. Old machinery will be sold. Old machinery. Yeah, that's all. That is bringing money in. in. So here the Pamia in a total receipts. Total receipts, which we designate as A. Total receipts, which we call A. Total receipts, which we call A. Then we come to payments. We come to payments. Now payments, there are several. According to information uh, two, we have materials or purchases. Let's just call them materials. We have materials. Uh, we are told they give two months credit, so you are in a shida. Then we have overheads. We have the overheads which are paid in a year's. It's okay. Then we have dividends. We have dividends. Then we have machinery. We have machinery. Uh, then we have income tax. Income tax. 
And then there is the short term loan. So there is the loan. Now, loan will attract two things. Eh? We will have the amount called principal. And then we will have another amount called what? Interest. We'll have interest. Then, ukirudi sasa huko juu unapata kuna mtu mwingine anaitwa wages my space ni kama inataka kukataa we have wages we have wages kataa wote wa So we have total payments, which we will call B, which we call B. We are told to do for the three months, the three months ending uh, December. So I have the month called October. I have another one called November. And I have another one called December. <laughs> trying to see whether it can spill over. Aya. Then, kuja kwa hii saibi gine, inewe inaitua balances. Balances. So, for the balances, we have to go na surplus or deficits. And deficit na kwa kwa brackets. And this will be arrived at as A minus B, you call it C. A minus B, you call it C. Then, that's a space down there to Nasai correct uh, opening balance. Opening balance. And this opening balance, we will call it B. We will call it B. Sasa tutafunga hapo. Bado tunaendelea. Tafunga hapo. We have to closing balance. Not closing balance. Amata, the Funga. Yeah. Jafunga. That is Funga Hapo. We will have Rune, which we will call E. And then we have the closing balance. The closing balance. Now, this closing balance will be arrived at as C plus B plus E. C plus B plus E. So, this space, if you can be able to divide it into three. Or rather, you as you must be able because it's just continuing. 
maindi yumekua squeeze So we now begin. So together, October, October they sold 23,000. So if you get 10% of 23,000, it is 2,300. So you're 2,300. 2,300. Then to Nabiwa, the balance, which is 90%, uh, will be collected the following month and subsequent month. So, Kisema now, 23,000 minus E, 23. So, the credit is 2,700. So, 50% of that. So, 50% of 2,700 is 10,350. Sasa your 10,000, it actually was November because we are told it will be taken the following month. So we are at 10,000, number 350. Now here we swing in and we are back in the December 10,350. Twenty one November. November they sold twenty five thousand. So ten percent of twenty five thousand is two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred. Okay, are you able to get enough space for what? Okay, so we are going to do minus you and you are going to do what? So we are going to do 500. That is 90%. So 50% of that, so we will by 0.5. Unapata 11,250. So that one, it's a little bit December. Our budget does not go there. Right, let's go to December. December, we sold 30,000. So 10% of that is 3,000. 10% of that is 3,000. So the other periods, we will not include them. We're not including them. So through the new market to September, September sales were 21,000. In 21,000, to carry 10%. So we still have a debt of 90%. So you multiply by 0.9. If you get 21,000, you multiply by 90%. This one. You do a daily gap. You are getting how much? Now that 18,900, 50% of it, 94, 50. It will be paid now the following month. And the following month is October because the user is in September. So we have 9450 about 9450. And the other balance that remains, you put it here. 9450. All right. We go to August. August, they sold 20,000. So take 90% of that. How much? 
Now that 18,000, 50% of it is 9,000. Eh? So the 9,000 was paid in September because it was a foreign man. And the other 9,000 would now be paid in October, the subsequent month. So here we receive 9,000. Next is the old machinery, which is mentioned in information uh, six. That proceeds from sale of an old machinery will be received in October, one million. So in October, we are receiving 1,000 here because our figures are in thousands. Maybe we needed to have indicated that, that our figures are in thousands. And that's all. So we can start now getting the totals. Receipts. Which one? Yeah, twenty one seven fifty. Abigail, you can unmute yourself. You also be giving us the figures straight. Twenty-two three hundred. Eh? Twenty-two three hundred. Twenty-four. Twenty-four Are you in agreement, Abigail? Yeah. Okay, so you proceed. All right. Then let's go to the side of payments. In the side of payments, we are told creditors for materials give two months credit. Give two months credit. So that means we pay after two months. We pay after two months. So the purchase that was done in August will be paid in, will be paid for in uh, October. So you simply come here and bring 10,200. Then here you bring 10,000. And here you bring 9,800. That's the meaning. The purchases, we are given two months. So what was bought in uh, August will be payable or paid in October. Uh, for the overheads, we are told they are payable one month in arrears. When you pay one month in arrears, it means the credit period has expired. And now that they have not mentioned what was the credit period, you take that you are supposed to pay immediately that month. So now that we do not pay that month, we are supposed then to pay the following month. So the, in October, we shall be paying overheads for September. So go to September, overheads were 2,100. They were 2,100. Then 2,300. And then 2400. Something else that you can easily come across uh, together with the uh, overheads is something called depreciation. Now, if you find depreciation, it should be subtracted. Depreciation never appears in cash, but it. For example, come to the viewer, every month there is a depreciation of 500. In the overheads, Every month there is a deposition of 500. Then we would have subtracted 500 here, 500 here, 500. So that's something that closely or uh, quite often is brought together with overheads. That deposition never appears in cash budget. Higher dividends, we are told they will be paid in December. So we go to the mute to the December 1500. 
in Android. Machinery costing 10,000 will be installed in September, but the payment in monthly installments of 2,000 per month for five months from October. So machinery, we begin paying 2,000, so we pay 2,000, then we pay 2,000, and we also pay 2,000. Because you're paying installments. Our income tax, according to information seven, of 5,000 will be paid in October. So here, income tax is 5,000. Uh, yeah. The next one is about now the rule. Now, this one is only applicable in the next month, not unless we are told the previous month there was a rule. So what will happen is that for this month of October, we are not going to have the rule payment. But instead, what we are going to do, Kwanzaa, we will bring, we are told the opening cash balance is supposed to be 800. So let's come here where we have the opening balance you record 800. You record 800, the opening balance in October. And then we are told if cash falls below 500, a short term can be arranged. So when there is a road facility, when there is a road facility, uh, remember first of all, come on to be a quarter man by a minimum balance. This item will not be there, this one. So you just have the surplus, you add the opening balance, you get the closing end, so that will not be there. So let's first of all get this total. 10,200 plus 2,100 plus 7,000. Abigail, give me the answer, the total of this. Abigail? Yeah. The total of this. Have you computed? 19,300. 19,300. 19,300. So now subtract this from uh, this 21. If you say 21,750 minus uh, your 19. You get twenty-four fifty. So it's a surplus, eh? It's a surplus. Oh, 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 there's something we have forgotten. Uh, uh, we have not put the wages. We have not put the wages. Let's make that correction. Wages for the month of October, four thousand. Sorry for that. So we have to rectify that. When we say how here, wages. So then that should be 23, yeah? 23,300. So Sasa here, uh, we have a shortage of 1550. 1550. So your 1550 negative, add 800, you get negative 750. But the question says this company, they must close with nothing less than 500. So if you don't get a loan, what are the negatives? 750, and 500. So first of all, come here and say the closing balance is 500. The closing balance must be 500. So then you ask yourself, how much must we get at the road? Is it 1250? We must go to the bank. You want to repair, what to repair here negative 750, 
alafu atupatie 500 ya kuweka so they will give us 12 50 So that 1250 will be paid the following month. So tukuje hapa kwa November. Principal amount is 1250. Principal amount hiyo ndio tunamekopa. Then let us get interest. Roll interest. Roll interest in November it will be 18% of 1250. Now what you get when you say 18% it will be the interest for the whole year. But remember this money we have just in date for one month. So you are supposed to multiply by 1 out of 12. So you are supposed to pay to say eighteen point seven five. Yes. Good. So eighteen point seven five. That's what we are supposed to pay. And then the wages for that month is four thousand two hundred. So let us add now. Excuse me. Yes. Is is the 10.5 payable on November or December? Is payable one month after borrowing. Should be December. Oh, we be... that. Eh? You see we borrowed in October. Is that so? Yeah. So yeah. one month after October is November. That's yeah. Amazing. Is that okay? Yes. And although uh, let me explain something here. Although this one we are calling it the closing balance, it is different from the closing stocks. Closing stocks who has in adjudicana at the end of the period. Like at the end of the month or at the end of the day. But a budget is done in advance. Is that so? Yeah. So this is a budget we prepared at the beginning of October. So we borrowed on 1st of October. Because a budget we prepare in advance to you could say here to navigate through that. So that's why now the one man uh, has to be that it is November not December because we did not borrow at the end of Uh, October, but we borrowed at the beginning. That understood, Abigail? Yes. So uh, now we want to add. We want to add ten thousand plus twenty three hundred plus two thousand plus twelve fifty plus eighteen point seven five plus forty two hundred. You got nineteen thousand seven sixty eight point seven five. So subtract that from twenty two three hundred. Uh, I'm getting twenty five that one point two five, which is positive. It five at one. That okay, Abigail? Yeah. Okay. So now uh, that means when we come here, our opening balance now for for November is five hundred. This one. That's the opening balance. So because this is positive, because this is positive, if you add five hundred. You get that that one. Now that 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 one is more than five hundred, which is the minimum balance that you should close it. So if it is more than, do we need to go for a loan? No. So there will be no loan here 
So our closing balance will be 30 that one point two five. Thirty that one point two five. So when we get here to the month of December, when we go to the month of December, there is no principal amount that we are paying. There is no loan interest, but we have wages of 4,500. Wages of 4,500. So with that, uh, we now see 9,800 plus 2,400 plus 1,500 plus 2,000 plus 4,500 is 20,200. So 24,600 minus that is 4,200. So that's 31.25. We are not going for the room, see that? We're not going to go for the room plus 31.25. It is seventy four that one point two five seventy four that one point two five. So, are we okay with the cash budget? Mm -hmm. So, in case they bring to you a cash budget question, that is the way to go. Abigail, you are okay with that? You proceed? Yes, I am. So, I want us now to do part B of that question. Part B of that question. Question four B. Now, a calculator manufacturing company finds that it costs shillings six twenty five to make a calculator, but the same is available in the market at shillings five seventy five each, with assurance of continued supply. The cost breakdown is as follows. So we have the direct materials, direct labor, uh, variable production overhead, and fixed production overhead. Of the fixed production overhead, 40% are specifically incurred in making the calculator. The balance will be incurred irrespective of the decision made. Now, should the company make or buy? So there's a case of uh, make or buy. It's a case of make or buy decision. Now, in the case of make or buy decision, 
I told you what you need to do is to prepare relevant making costs. Relevant making costs per unit. Relevant making cost, as in how much you will incur for you to make that unit. Relevant making costs. So the relevant making costs is, uh, first of all, is direct materials. I told you anything called direct is a relevant cost. Anything called direct is a relevant cost. So 275. Direct labor is also a relevant cost. Direct labor 175. The next one is variable overheads. Again, anything called variable is also relevant. Anything called variable is relevant. It is a uh, 50. But what is called fixed? Fixed is relevant. Not unless it has been baptized to be called specific. So specific. Specific fixed overheads. Now, the specific fixed overheads, we are told 40%. So it is 40% of this 125. So 40% of 125 is how much? It's 50 shares. So you see the balance of 75, that is what we call the general. Eh? The general fixed overheads are irrelevant. General fixed overheads are irrelevant, so we will not consider them. So total, now add these ones. Uh, you get 550. 550. So this one you are supposed to compare with external purchase costs. External purchase costs. External purchase costs. So these guys are saying they would uh, be willing to sell to us at how much? 575. It's available in the market at five. Can you see that? Yeah. It is available at 575. So if it is available at 575, then the advice. We make the advice. So what do you think we should tell these guys? They should make the item. Because when you make, it costs you 550. But if you buy, it costs you 575. So you make the item. So that is how you make a, an outsourcing decision. The key thing is to be able to compile the relevant making cost. Then you compare them with the external purchase costs. Compare them with external purchase costs. Good. Roman 2, we are told if the supplier offered the calculator for 525, would you change your, uh, your decision? Uh, with new terms, let's call them new terms. New terms, we just call them new terms. When we have new terms, uh, relevant making costs, relevant 
making costs, it still remains 550. Yeah? External purchase costs, external purchase costs. This guy is now proposing to give us the calc at 525. So do we change our advice? We should now buy. And we were told to explain. So the explanation, it is now cheaper. It is now cheaper to buy. It is now cheaper to buy than to make. So the factors, those are the ones that I taught to you, which we call non-monetary factors to consider. The non-monetary factors to consider. You're back now, Abigail. Abigail, now can you get me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so we have said we should change the decision. The next question that I want to do is question 5B. Question 5B. Oh, please. Hey. I didn't get that. So I wanted to copy the, the sum and then I'll do it later. Whatever I have brought, you have not copied. I, I didn't, I wasn't with you because the, I had lost you before. Okay. I lost you like the whole of that sum. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll, I'll send you the recording, whatever. Okay. I'll send you the recording. So we got to question uh, five B. Question five B. is on the bookkeeping. Exam, you just confine yourself to the accounts that they have asked. You just confine yourself to the accounts that they have asked. So the accounts that have been asked. Uh, one, 
is the stores control account. Stores control account. The next one is work in progress. Work in progress account. The next one is finished goods account. Uh -huh. Finished goods is like a small one. So let me first of all have the production overhead account. Overhead account. Then finished goods account. Finished goods account is not a big one. So that I have a space here in case I may require some workings, I can bring them there. So in the exam, you just confine yourself to what they have asked. Okay, so we can start reading as we call it. Raga Limited operates an interlocking accounting system from the cost accounts. The following information was available for the month of July. The opening balances, we have the stores account. So balance brought down here. Balance brought down is 108,500. 108,500. Then work in progress, balance brought down. So balance brought down is 178,200. 178,200. Finished goods, balance brought down. Balance brought down is 84,150. 84,150. Then transactions for the month. We are told cost of finished goods. Cost of finished goods. So those are goods that were finished in the work in progress and they were taken to the finished goods account. So you debit the finished goods account because of work in progress. Because of work in progress. Uh, 1 million 24,100. Then you go to the work in progress. You credit it because of finished because of finished 1 million 24,100. That is what was finished. Cost of goods sold. When goods are sold, we move them from the finished goods, we take them to the cost of sales, being ready for sale. So we will come here and grab this one because of cost of sales. Because of cost of sales, we have 986, 920. 986, 920. Now, uh, we don't have the cost of sales account. So we will not credit it. I mean, we will not debit it because we don't have it. The next one is direct materials issued. When materials are issued, you debit work in progress and you credit the stores. So let's start with work in progress. Because of the stores, because of the stores, 395, 500. 395, 500. And then we go to the stores because of work in progress, 395, 500. 
395, 500. Ah, yeah. Direct wages. When you have direct wages, you debit the work in progress and credit the wages account, which we do not have. So we will just come here and debit this one because of wages. Wages of uh, 17960. 17960. Uh, from there, uh, production overhead as per financial account. When you see per financial account, it means that is what was paid because finance is what pays. Now, when you pay, when we pay, you debit the overhead account and credit the finance or the bank account. So we do not have the finance, so we can't get it because of the financial, because of the financial, we paid an amount of 416, 440. 416, 440. 416, 440. And then, direct materials purchases. When you buy materials, you debit the stores and credit finance. So because finance is not there, we will come here and credit stores because of the financial, because of the financial, an amount of four than three, 108. Four than three, 180. Then we are told that in the cost account, the position was 25,000 per month. The position was 25,000 per month. Now, the position is part of overhead. Remember what I have just said a while ago when you were in the cash budget, eh? that the position quite often put a part of the overhead. Yeah. So, Sasa, we let the upper. Because of the depreciation, we just call it depreciation. We have a depreciation account. Depreciation, it is an amount of 25,000 per month. 25,000 per month. 25,000 per month. Then we are told the production overhead is absorbed at 25% of wages. So those are, are, are absorbed overheads. So the absorbed overheads, they will go to the work in progress. When you absorb overheads, you take them, you debit the work in progress, credit the overheads. So because we have space, we can have it as a work here, 250 percent of the direct wages, 170.960. 17960 to 50%. 427,400. Yeah. And that's all according to the information provided. Now from there you close the account. You close the account. So for the stores, we will just give it the balance card down because we are not told what moved from here. Oh, Jareta here, right? Jareta overheads happen. So because of overheads, because of overheads, we are supposed to bring 427, 400. 427, 400. So the other thing that we should have had here, but we are not told, is the indirect materials, which should have gone to the white. But because it's not there, we just close the account. Uh, we say balance carried down. 
balance coming down to fund your account. So we can't do it. So we can't do it. So we can't do it. So we When you buy materials, you debit stores and credit finance. So we can't say you. Sorry for that. So because of the financial, it is four that three one eight. Four that three one eight. When you buy, you debit materials or stores and credit finance. So then you should have said four that three one eight plus. One week, five hundred minus three ninety five, five hundred. Mm -hmm. You're getting one forty six, one eight. Yeah, one forty six thousand one hundred eight. That account in the full one. We do the same thing with the work in progress. So the balance carrying down. The same one, 178, 200, plus 395, 500, plus 179, 60, plus 427, 400, minus 10, 24, 100. You're getting 147, 960. 147,960. And that account, we have to make funga. That account, we have to make funga. I have now, Payula Mzigine. At the Kua 416, 440, plus 25,000, minus 427. 400, 14040, which should be on this side there. Yeah. Should be on this side there. 14,040. Now, this one should be taken to the PML. It's not a balance carried down, it is an under absorption. It is an under absorption, so we are supposed to credit here and debit PL. And then we do the same rhythm for the finished goods 84 and 50 plus 10, 24, 100 minus 9, 86, 920, 121. So balance. Carry down is one twenty one three thirty. One twenty one three thirty. Now here account to make full money. Here. One twenty one three thirty. So yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Now, our time is we have like twenty minutes. 
And then the next question I wanted to do is we take more time. So then what I will do, let us go to question three of the same paper. Let us go to question three. Abigail, are you okay? Yes, I am. Okay, let's now go to question three and withdraw process account. Question three of the same paper. So we have details. We have units. We have unit costs. We have amount. We have details. We have units. We have unit costs and amounts. So we are calling it just process accounts. So we are told parcel fruit processors limited manufactured juices mixed from several fruits. The finished product is transferred to the warehouse on completion in mixing process. The following cost data leads to the month of July. So we have the raw materials input. So we begin with raw materials. Raw materials. So the raw materials, we have uh, fruits. Fruits, we are told it is 60,000 kilograms. And the total cost is 2 million 700,000. 2 million 700,000. Then there is a special liquid. There is a special liquid that does not have units. But the amount is three million eight hundred seventy thousand. Eight hundred and seventy thousand. Then we have direct wages. Direct wages. And direct wages is two million three hundred forty thousand. Two million three hundred forty thousand. We have overheads. We have overheads, which we are told is one million three hundred fifty thousand. One million three hundred fifty thousand. Then to Nabiwa, normal output of the process is ninety percent of input. So what that tells you is that normal loss is that normal loss is 
normal loss is 10 percent we were left with the 90 the commandisha we lost 10. so 10 percent of 60,000 that is 6,000 units that is 6,000 units and then we are told losses in the process are sold to makers at 90 shillings so the unit cost is 90 so if you take 6,000 times 90, that gives you what? 540,000. 540,000. The output was 55,000. Uh, so finished goods, the finished goods, now this process account, eh? this process account, eh? we come here to record now our work in progress. Your work in progress. And I go out of our work in progress, finish to my work up and it's kind of a finished goods account. Eh? Yes. So, so uh, the finished goods, we are told it is now that your work in progress account, eh? So now that like, you put the raw material, wages, now buy it. Higher. The company applies a margin of 40%. So you can put up a guy. So uh, let's balance that. So when you try to balance, you find this is 60 and this is 61. Eh? So there is an abnormal gain. Abnormal gain of 1,000. Number of gain of 1,000. So that the units columns are balancing. Although I told you it's not a must to keep on balancing, but if you want to show uh, uh, there is no harm, this is 61,000. There's no need of keeping on showing, but if you feel like you need to have it shown. Uh, no bone is broken. So this is 61,000. So with that, we get the unit cost. The unit cost. So unit cost, when I do I cost zote, E2.7. Plus that eight seventy plus twenty three forty plus thirteen fifty. Then you minus in a count of five forty thousand. So yo te yo te na na ni una igavia sixty thousand minus. 6,000, a normal loss. One, one eighty. So if you have shillings, one eighty. So that one eighty, we may let the half a quanza for no gain. So that this becomes a hundred and eighty thousand. A hundred and eighty thousand. Then we put the half a one eighty. So same uh, times fifty five thousand. Mean we put it exactly one eighty. Yeah, we put one eighty. At the end. This one. One eighty nine. 
Abigail, how many people did you? One eighty. Maybe I will subtract. Because in the same way, seven hundred or two point seven million, that is seventy thousand plus twenty three forty thousand plus thirteen fifty thousand. Let me just five forty. You divide by fifty four thousand. One eight eh? mm -hmm. So to go to the multiple here, nine million nine hundred thousand. Okay. Nine million nine hundred thousand. And if you still want to show the total, that's five forty thousand. Ten four forty thousand. So this is ten four forty thousand. And the same case here, which will now be ten four forty thousand. But I told you this bit is not very important, especially kama hii ita kutoka ikiwa na decimals, eh? It may not exactly balance. But kama hii na decimal, it should balance. So, okay. Then from there, eh, abnormal gain account. You can either draw it like this one. The same format, eh? or you can just uh, take the normal T account. That is what I want you to do because uh, even if you draw these two, eh, these ones do not count because you don't balance the units. You don't balance the units. So we just bring the abnormal gain account. So we have normal gain account. You can see here we have debited. Eh? So we are supposed to credit here because of the process account. Process account. We have 180,000. Now this one has two ways. You can either carry it as a balance or you can take it to PL. The best is to take it to PL. So PL 180,000. So the same thing you do with any other account. This is the abnormal loss, abnormal gain, even normal loss. When I say Chora, it is another exactly like me. Like me, these two units, these two columns are useless. We don't balance the units. So the only uh, column that is important is the amount, the balancing figure that we have So the next thing now to know is what? the same price per liter. So we will need to come here and say we know that same price, if you are told to get the same price, it is the cost plus the profit. Similar. We are looking for same price, the cost plus the profit. So we are told this company is uh, earning a margin of 40%. So margin is 40%. Which is 40 out of 100. Or you can say 12 of 50. Markup, I told you when I taught you uh, job costing that if you have been given margin and you want to go down to markup, what you do, you take the new meter here and we subtract it. 
so that that you are 40 out of what? 60. You subtract. Kama unatoka kwa margin, ukienda kwa markup, you subtract. Lakini kama unatoka kwa markup, ukienda kwa margin, you add. And therefore the price, the price should be equal to 180 plus 180 is the cost plus 40 out of 60 times 180. 40 out of 60 times 180. Getting 300. So the selling price is 300. So we are going to stop there. But on your own, now that we come to the Marisa Ikaratas here. On your own, I would like you to complete question 3B. Question 3B. And you do question 3, whatever, and question 1. And for question one, I want to give you a lot of work. So that you have for question one, C, yeah? to be a P4, to be a E4, now to be a W is here. So that your man uh, stores ready and you're fully covered. So we stop there for today. Now that we don't have time to go, we have to agree on how to meet. Uh, if you will be available, I propose that even tomorrow we meet 11 to 1. Is that okay with you, Abila? Yeah, very okay. Good. Then even on Friday, uh, so that we are able to finish earlier next week. Uh, we're good. Thank you.